I did it. I got a job working for the Diesel Brothers. But the question is, why is that so important to me? Well, it's important to me because just over a year ago, I set a goal. I said, I want to work for a YouTuber who has over 1 million subscribers. So then somehow in just a few months, I managed to get a job working for a YouTube celebrity that has over 2 million subscribers and it felt like I was living in a dream. Everything was coming together and happening at once and I loved it. Fast forward a year and life feels just as amazing, but there's one thing I've been doing wrong. I haven't been making any of my own videos. Which is weird because making entertaining videos is something I really enjoy doing. So in this video, I want to explain how I got this job. But to do that, we got to rewind a bit. So I grew up in a small town on the East Coast, Northern Vermont, population of 700 people. And yes, I actually did have only 700 people. I was like 45 minutes from the nearest Walmart. So if that gives you an example of how far out in the boonies I was. I had a lot of other siblings, so I was just given freedom to just kind of do what I wanted since they were all older and had moved out already. And it was just me at home. Did all the typical things every country boy does. My start to everything where I left home was I made friends with this guy and he was kind of already doing a lot of media related things. So he got me a job as a producer at a sports broadcasting company. So I just started as a camera man I'd go to all these like high school and college like football games basketball games soccer games I would just run the camera I worked for them for about two years towards the end of the time there I ended up being a producer so I would go to the games and I would not only film but I would also produce the show and it was kind of a big thing to take on because I had no idea what I was doing but somehow I managed to do it so that was like one of the first like big video related uh, job I had. Now the other question everybody is probably wondering right now is, Nate, how are you not in school? So I was actually homeschooled. I went all through eighth grade. I did my first year of high school and I'll be honest, I cheated all the way through it. And the next year came around and I was like, well, I'm either gonna have to cheat through this year or not do it because I didn't learn anything the year before that would help carry me through the next year. So I talked to my parents after a little bit of negotiating, which I somehow managed to win a lot. They agreed to let me drop out of high school and I never looked back. The whole teenage dream that every kid seems to be living now, which is honestly just a bunch of partying and a lot of other things they do to waste their time. Really had no wish to do it, and I had a vision of where I wanted to go, and I would rather chase that than spend all my time in high school learning something that I really didn't need. Cam also had a lot of um, Instagram and YouTube videos that he didn't want to edit for all these different clients he had and he'd be like hey Nate do you want to edit those for me and I was like sure because I was trying to learn he even like bought me my first computer and everything but I wasn't learning how to like tell a story it was just very like cookie cutter um, super easy so I was like I'll start DMing Instagram pages that have similar videos to the type of videos I'm making I went on my Instagram just started DMing every Instagram page I could possibly find and a lot of these pages were like the typical business page or like guru pages I I got this one page to respond to me and that page had a lot of other clients that they were making videos for. I started working for them. Everything was the same. So I was like, well, I get really bored making these videos. So I'm going to hire somebody to make them for me. I went on like Fiverr and Upwork and online jobs, all the places where you can hire like a virtual assistant from another country. And I hired somebody and trained them how to make the videos. So then I was just kind of the middleman. And then I started doing that full time. And at this time, I was still living in Vermont. I would just drive around the whole East Coast. I spent a lot of time in South Carolina and North Carolina and Florida. I got to the point where driving wasn't a big deal to me and I could work from anywhere. I'd just go to a coffee shop. Still, I wasn't really enjoying it. So I was just kind of always looking for like the next thing. Christmas of 2021. I went home for the whole Christmas season. And then starting that year, I heard about this program called 75 Hard. I was like, well, I'm going to start 75 Hard. I'll put a thing up on the screen here that shows what it has to do each day, but it's for 75 days. It just kind of taught me to take it one step at a time because when you do the program, it feels like you have a lot to do every day. But if you just think about it as, well, this is what I have to do today, then the days just go by and you don't even think about it. It's just normal and it becomes the routine. That's kind of what it taught me to just take each thing day by day and not worry about everything down the road. I went 75 days, went all the way through it and I loved it. I was kind of fed up with what I was doing for this one company and I wanted to spend more time with a camera in my hand. So I started DMing all the clients that 
had hired the guy I was working for. He just had a whole bunch of different people below him that were running like marketing agencies, drop shipping stores, all these e-commerce type businesses. I started messaging all of them and I was like, hey, well, you need social media content. I'm happy to come to wherever you are as long as you provide me housing. Because remember at the time I'm only 17, so I can't get a hotel or an Airbnb. And if it works out, it works out. I'll stay and work for you. If not, so be it. Got this guy in California I was going to go work with. It was like a month after I had turned 17. I packed everything in my car. It's basically a duffel bag. Um, I had a one wheel at the time. You see a one wheel and like all my Instagram videos and everything, all my camera gear. So I drive across the country. I get to LA. I meet this guy. I work with him for a week. Turns out that this guy's just a scammer and so I'm like well that sucks but there was one other option it was this guy I'd reached out to that lived in Las Vegas and he was like yeah if you come by Las Vegas sometime we can meet up see if it'd work and I was trying to get in, in contact with this guy the whole drive from LA to Las Vegas just as I'm driving into Las Vegas he texts me so I'm like I'm driving into Vegas currently can I come over right now he was actually living in a house with a whole bunch of his college buddies and they all had drop shipping stores and I ended up staying that night and actually stayed there all summer long so I stayed there for like five months it was a great learning experience I was still 17 so I couldn't really do a whole lot and funny enough I actually slept on a couch all summer long so I don't even think I had a sleeping bag most of the time like I didn't need much and I was just making anything work because I was determined to just not be in Vermont so I'm there until like August or September uh, they didn't really need me anymore more, and I wasn't getting paid enough. I was living for free, so that was that was paying on its own, but I wasn't making enough to really do much. Well, I took a couple weeks off. I went back to Vermont. While I'm in Vermont, Cam calls me. Cam's living in Miami, calls me, and he's like, hey, I just met this guy at a restaurant. He's looking for somebody full-time to make all the social media content. The thing is, he needs you to come down tonight or tomorrow morning. So I hop on a plane a few hours later, land in Miami. I meet this guy the next day and he immediately was like, yeah, I think this would work. I call the guys in Vegas. I was like, hey, I'm taking this other job. So thank you for everything. Flew right back to Las Vegas, packed up everything in my car, drove from Las Vegas to Colorado. At the time he lived in Colorado. This was like the end of 2021. He actually liked traveling a lot. So throughout that time, uh, we were in Texas for a bit. We flew to Puerto Rico for a while. He was just kind of hopping around. But the mistake I made when I got that job was I made the agreement with him that I I would pay for all my traveling expenses, not realizing how much we were gonna travel, which it was fine because I was already traveling a lot. So I was like used to having all those expenses, but then all of a sudden we were flying everywhere and we were staying in Airbnbs and hotels and stuff. I was used to traveling for really cheap and then all of a sudden it was getting really expensive. And then the next issue came up, which was, I didn't really like that job either. <laughs> So this guy owned a marketing agency and it was, it was just a growing period for me and I'm thankful for it. We're in Georgia. I was kind of fed up with work. I was like, I at least need just a break for me to go clear my head. I was about to turn 18. It's mid January at the time. The one big thing was I have traveled enough to have gone to all the 48 lower states. And the only two states I had left were Alaska and Hawaii. I was thinking about it one day and I was like, it wouldn't be actually that hard for me to go to Alaska and Hawaii before I turn 18. Then I could say I hit all 50 states before I turned 18. I drove straight back to Colorado, which is where we were going to meet up. I was actually staying at Airbnb at the time. Like, keep in mind, at this time, I'm still 17, so, like, everything is difficult. Everything was a hassle. I was always having to use other older people to get me anywhere. I got one of the people from the company I was working for to book me an Airbnb up in Alaska, and at this time, I have less than a month before I turn 18, and I was like, I'm going to go to Alaska. I'm there literally for three days. It actually snowed every day, and it was pretty overcast and pretty cold. Looking back on it, I definitely could have planned more but in the moment I was just going for it and I got the Alaska experience so I fly back to Colorado this is where kind of stuff started kind of turning to go the other direction me coming from a place where I rode dirt bikes and I was in the country and I was into doing things with my hands living that life and then spending all this time in office space it was really kind of starting to take a toll on me and I was getting pretty annoyed with it and I was still of the mindset I had gotten all these experiences so far and they had worked so well and I had no plan I was like well I can do that again I'm gonna do that again so I opened Instagram the heavy D sparks Instagram page is at the start of my stories it's just a story that says meet and greet here in Salt Lake City had the address and everything it was like a half an hour gap where they were gonna be meeting people so I was like well I have nothing to lose. It's eight hours away. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Why not just drive to Salt Lake City? And I get to Salt Lake City about uh, half an hour before the meet and greet. And at this time, I just knew I was looking for two big bearded guys. I didn't really know that much about them. I finally find them. They have a whole line of people waiting to meet them. And they're doing signatures and taking pictures and everything. I'm just like sitting there kind of watching. I'm like, I don't want to go through the line because I want to be different. But there wasn't a way to get around that. I get in line. I wait all the way through the line. It was a long line. After waiting in line, for quite a while 
I get up to them and I and I remember uh, Dave Sparks. He like is just like preparing to take a picture with me, and I really had no wish to take a picture at all. And I was just like, "Hey, I wanted to talk to you guys because I want to work for you." And so I just immediately start like pitching them on what I've done, why I hate my job right now. I basically just told them everything I could possibly tell them, as condensed and as fast as I possibly could. Dave's a very like to the point person. He's like, "Sure." Give me your number. So I give him my number. I end up taking a picture with him, which I'll show the picture here. I look tiny. A lot has changed since then. I'm still pretty small. For the record, for all the people out there that are like, Nate, you're still just as small. Just watch. So I take the picture and I just like walk away. And as I'm walking away, I'm like, oh no. I forgot to tell him I had my own camera. I forgot to tell him like all these different things. I waited just a couple minutes and Dave Sparks walks away. So I'm like, oh no, like I wonder if he's coming back. And so there was this one guy just kind of like hanging out with him. And so I walk over to him and I'm like, hey, are you their cameraman? And he's like, no, but I'm with them. What's up? Turns out it was Hans, who is my boss today. Also, it's funny because his biggest pet peeve is when people call him the cameraman. But I was like, hey, are you the cameraman? And I told him a little more about who I was, which he was actually the person I needed to talk to anyway. I had nothing else to say. I was like, well, what's done is done. If they call me, they call me. I'm going to leave. So I called my brother and I told him that I just met the Diesel Brothers and he thought that was kind of cool. He's like, you know, that's a really big opportunity. Like I wouldn't leave Salt Lake City for at least a week. So I decided to stay. I think I was there like four days when my boss from Colorado calls me and he's like, sorry, but we don't need you anymore. I was like so ready to go. I was, I was happy about it. It was great. So at this point, I'm like, I have nothing to lose. I might as well go to Hawaii because I went to Alaska and I had one more state. I wasn't quite 18 yet. I had one more state to go to and I was like, I'm going to go to Hawaii. And so I ended up going to Hawaii. Really had no job. I still had money and I was just, I had a vision. I was going to stay there for a little while longer. From there, I was just going to go back to Vermont. And so I fly back to LA where I had left my car when I flew to Hawaii. I pick up my car. I drove straight back to Vermont. I had told everybody. I had always just said, I want to work for a YouTuber. I want to see what it's like working for somebody in the entertainment space. I want to be out of this whole business guru world. And I want to work for somebody that just entertains people. Also, I wanted somebody that actually did something. I'm there for just about a month. And one day I see a post on one of their Instagram stories back out here in Utah. And they're like, hey, we're looking for a videographer. And I was like, oh my gosh, like since I had been traveling for the last year and a half of my life, I was ready to just be home and I was ready to just make my own YouTube videos. But I was like, this is cool. Like I got to try at least. So I immediately sent him an email and then I get a text from Hans who manages all the vlogs and everything for the Diesel Brothers. All the text said was, hey, you said you had your own camera equipment. And so I just like read it. I was just like, this isn't happening. I don't think I've ever been so excited about a text in my life. I'll be honest. A couple minutes later, I hop on a call with Hans. He's like, if you want to come out here for a trial period, you're more than welcome to. We'd love to have you come out two weeks all expenses paid when can you be here and i was like when do you want me there he's like can you be here on thursday and that's like a week away and i was just like yep i can actually and i remember just like i was in such shock because it was like i had wanted to work for a youtuber so bad and i had had so many things recently that it was starting to kind of get me like okay i feel like i can't hold a job like what am i doing wrong am i just lazy what's keeping me from making this work so i drive out to salt lake city ended up working out great i immediately clicked with everybody and they hired me within a few days so I stayed. I had no reason to go back to Vermont. I was just ready to start working. I was ready to have a life that was more exciting. I was over the whole office period of my life and I was ready to actually do something and that's what they did here. Since then, life hasn't gotten any less exciting. I've gotten to meet a lot of people and experience a lot of cool things. And the other thing that really makes me happy is I feel like Dave's actually doing something to help. It's not like he's just making YouTube videos that are solely entertaining. When we, make, when we go on video shoots and we shoot these vlogs, something is actually getting done. Somebody's getting a benefit out of it. For example, there was a plane crash up in Oregon a few months back, and it was on the side of a mountain many miles uh, out into the wilderness area where they couldn't get any equipment or anything. And the family of this man that passed away in the crash, they didn't have the funds to remove the plane wreck. So we got to go out there and remove it, and we made a whole YouTube video about that. Another example is we just airlifted a burnt truck and trailer off a dry lake bed in Reno, Nevada with a Chinook helicopter. We flew to Scotland for a big video shoot we did for a sponsor. That was the first time I had gone to Europe, actually. Another thing is searching for missing persons. We've done quite a few uh, search and rescues for missing people and, and such, and you see a lot of that. If you follow anything with the channel at all, you'll see that He's big into the missing persons uh, videos. It's never not exciting. We've 
done fan boats on snow. We did a series called Big Iron, and that was up in Idaho where we dragged a whole bunch of machinery down a mountain. And like at one point, one of the machines started running away and pulling Dave with it in the front loader. And it was like super exciting. So for anybody that's still watching, I guess what I want to communicate is that trying things always pays off. Like not being afraid to just put yourself out there and throughout this experience, like this job has changed my life. I moved to Utah and when I actually moved out here, I knew that if I didn't get this job, I was going to feel terrible about myself. I was just determined to do anything it took to try and get this job. And so then when I did get this job and I realized that I was actually going to live here, it was like pretty scary because for the first time I was like, now that I have this, I can't lose it. I knew the job was such a great opportunity. I had to do whatever it took to just keep it. That meant I had to live in Utah and I wanted to live here, but it was still scary knowing that I was still far from all my family. And it's always scary when you leave home, but I just pushed through the first few months and over time it felt more and more like home. And the people that I work with and spend time with every day, they're like family to me. I honestly can't say I've ever had such close friends as I do now with the people I work with. I'm so thankful for it. And throughout this, one of my closest friends now is Eric, who I work with. It's just he and I who make the videos and we get along great. Like we hang out outside of work and I really look up to him. And it, it's cool to build a relationship like that with somebody you work with because going to work every day doesn't really feel like going to work. It feels like it's just another day of doing life. I have so many people here that I look up to and I've learned so much since I've been here and I've made memories that I'm never gonna forget. And even like coming to work, like I enjoy it. I guess if there's one thing I wanna communicate to anybody still watching is if you're young like me, you gotta realize you have nothing to lose. If you have a direction, even just a slight direction, just follow it. Even if it doesn't work out, go the other direction. Maybe there's something in that direction that'll be better. Don't be afraid to try things because yeah, a lot of the things I tried didn't really work, but it didn't take me that long to somehow get a job that I love. It's been great. I've been put out of my comfort zone like crazy and I have learned a lot. I went skydiving for the first time. I went to the Moab rope swing. I was terrified, I'll be honest, but I was determined and I did it and I overcame that fear and the same with skydiving and it felt great. And ever since I've been here, I've just been kind of determined to overcome anything I'm afraid of. So if you take anything from this video, just realize that it's always a lot easier than you think. So just live it up. You only have so much to live. On that topic, recently I actually bought just a cheap Porsche because I wanted to drive down the West Coast in a sports car. It's always been my dream. It's been on my bucket list. I've always wanted to do that, but more on that soon.